We are rolling. Marcus Conte reporting with my friend Steve Outram. Steve Outram tuning in, coming in, coming into us from from New Zealand. New Zealand population seven million. New Zealand's only on the other side of the country, right? On the other side of the globe, right? Now I don't want to get into that that the New Zealand the New Zealand uh, uh, controversy here because we've had some bad you know bad uh, bad uh, uh, repercussions from the the. Uh, the thing that happened over there, but we'll, we'll talk about that another time. But Steve, today we're going to talk about a uh, a very uh, interesting subject, very interesting to a lot of people that are online, right? It's a uh, it's about LARPing. It's LARP, L LARP. What is a LARP? What the fuck is a LARP, right? LARP, LARPing, right? So so LARPing. If you if you look at the if you if you Google it online, you'll see. Uh, you'll see like uh, like like sci-fi. You'll see like like gladiator type of people that uh, that uh, run around with with fake swords and and tell stories about each other. And and um, it's all fiction. It's it's pure make believe, right? And and um, and but th th that's not the type of LARPing we're talking about. We're talking about today. We're going to talk about a type of LARPing that the actual LARPers. The people that are involved in the LARP sometimes won't even acknowledge that they are the LARP. Right? They they pretend they, they're in this pretend world of storytelling that somehow sometimes is masked as fake news, sometimes is masked as journalism, sometimes it's just it's just casual. I want to do a website. I want to do my own YouTube blog, and. And out come the stories right now. So, so one is is purely fiction, and everybody knows that they're getting involved in the LARP when they sign up for it. They're they they're it's a live action role play, live action role play. It is a LARP, uh, and they know in the physical sense they know that they're getting involved in it. They meet in a field and they battle it out with these with these swords. But the type of LARP we're talking about here is different. Uh, this is a this is where it gets ugly, and sometimes. You know, if, if you follow my channel, uh, you know, like for for example, the Jenny Moore case, right, was was possibly a LARP gone wrong, right? And that's the kind of LARPs we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about internet LARPs. We're going to name names. We're going to talk about people. We're going to, you know, maybe make an enemy or two, or maybe maybe clear the air so these people can, um, I don't know, find some peace, find some joy in what they're doing. I call it what it is. Uh, so. So, um, so that, so that's, uh, so, so this is Steve Outram. Steve Outram is a, is a journalist, is a guy on YouTube. I have his, I'll bring up his site. He'll tell us all about himself. So he's, um, he's got this site called Crypto Beast. I found Steve through the grapevine. We have a lot of uh, crossover. I don't want to call them friends at this point, but people, <laughs> you know, acquaintances that have <coughs> crossed over from, from here and there. And Steve's got a couple of, you know, a couple of hundred Couple of hundred um, videos up, couple of thousand subscribers. People know Steve as kind of a a deep researcher, very thorough, very very um, detail oriented. Unlike myself, was just you know I just I just kind of dive in. So so um, so so Steve, just tell us. So you're not. I, I wanted to know right, right, just so people know know who you are. You're not a lawyer. You're not a. Tell tell me about yourself. Yeah, I'm a business guy, a technology entrepreneur. I, I did do a year of law school and I did a business degree. And I started a company in the 1990s called Sausage Software. Our program was called Hot Dog and it made it easy for people to make web pages. And, and back in these days, it was pretty hard to do that. Uh, so I had the domain name sausage.com. Uh, I was down to my last $18 and Oscar Meyer offered me a million dollars for sausage.com. Oh, and uh, I... Uh, Thankfully, I, I turned them down and I was able to make a lot more money than that. It was the uh, first internet company that went public on the Australian Stock Exchange. And I actually, I took a record that Rupert Murdoch had held since the 1950s for being the youngest CEO of a, a publicly traded company in Australia. Uh, and then I sold out of that company in 2000, uh, right before the dot-com crash. I've done technology investing ever since, living between Melbourne, Australia and San Francisco. Just moved back to New Zealand after 25 years away. Uh, in 2017, and so up until that time, I was in uh, California. 
Uh, so your but your passion is more like research history. You 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 yeah yeah. So so I was I, I was lucky enough to retire once when I was twenty six, but I got a That's bit so bored, so awesome. I did a lot of technology. That's such an awesome good. success story, man! I love that. Oh, I love thank that you. That was it was good times. And then uh, I was lucky enough to retire again in twenty thirteen to start a family and also to work on my passion, which is uh, history and and historical research. And you know, I really like to figure out what's really going on behind the scenes of. Yeah, the, the version of events that we get, history is his story. You know, it's told by the victors, and any mm. historian will tell you that what really happened is almost never the same as what the official version is. So, I've been studying that with a particular focus on the, on the technology industry. Yeah, it's getting harder, as you say. It's getting harder for people to um, to fake history because of the real time. I think you'd probably agree with that. The real time. Uh, real timeness of news, the the documentation of video, you know, any anybody with a webcam and a you know and, and a computer could make a or even a cell phone can make a YouTube channel and document their history. So so I, I do yeah that's uh, you know history. Well, it's it's, a, it's, a, it's an interesting time because uh, the masses of people are waking up to the fact that the news is actually fake. <laughs> right. uh, you know the it's it it, it almost all of it is. Right? Is it is it, is it fake because the reporters are no good, or is it fake because there's a political agenda? Of and, course, yeah, the you look deeper I mean, the, any the, any idiot at this point, I think. Well, I, you know, that's an interesting thing. Stop right there. Most people think when you watch fake news, people think that Rachel Maddow is just that stupid, is just that is just that ignorant, and she's actually the opposite. She's highly intelligent, but she has bought into a narrative. She was hired based on a narrative of progressive uh, American progressive agendas coming into the Obama era. And she was a rock star at the time. And that is the, I, I know that I know the liberals like to think the think the liberal side left likes to think of themselves as not the conservatives, but they have become the conservative conservative, meaning that they don't want to change it. Why? Because they're making a lot of money, right? So they keep Rachel Maddow and, and people like that, you know, keep them in check Keep paying them six million, eight million a year, right? Everything stays the same. But to think that that she's making those decisions that Russia hacked the election is, you know, it's, I I hope it's becoming ridiculous. I mean, it is it is to to you, it is to I, you know. But some people are still yeah. Well, not. it's a, it's a it's a conspiracy theory, isn't it? And right. what's interesting is that while the establishment is you know, caught red-handed giving us the conspiracy theories mm -hmm. at the same time citizen journalists are actually able to <laughs> unlock all of the information and go and seek primary source documentation and find out what really happened and you know you mentioned jenny moore before marcus and yeah. that's one thing i really like about your style of reporting that you really dug into that story and it's like well okay first of all look i got you dragged into that I, I got i mean i got dragged into that backwards but we'll talk about that we'll talk i'm sorry i interrupted you go ahead yeah, I, I, I mean, just the, the, the point about it is that when we first heard of her death, right. well, we're like, how do we know this is true? And the <laughs> right, mainstream right. media the media is reporting about it straight away. They're not even <laughs> looking into it. And we were like, well, who ID'd the body? You know, where's right, the autopsy the report? Time, and then I, you, I had... But not only, did you, not only did you get the autopsy report, but you went to the local university and spoke to experts and got them to analyze it for you. I mean, <laughs> right, right. Well, what, well, why, why is it that you're doing that? And then the Rachel Maddows with their massive budgets and these huge news organizations are no longer doing any type of that investigation at all. Right, right. Well, I mean, it's, I, it's again, it's obvious because they cater to the donor class that has no interest in that. And we, you, I, I, I mean, I certainly cater to the people. I, I mean, I'm, I'm A, a curious person. Right? That's, that's the only reason. I was a whistleblower. I saw corruption in a, in a, you know, in a, in a job that I held for less than a year. And I said, this is freaking crazy, man. This has been going on for 30 years. And when I did the, the, the math, it, it tallied into the, you know, the tens of millions of dollars that were being siphoned from the city of New York. And I was able to, you know, I'm, I'm tech savvy. I, I, I bugged the, you know, I had surveillance in the room. I was able to capture the audio. And, and I'll tell you, man, the, the, the courts were just not interested in hearing anything that I had to say. The media was, of course, people were because it was obvious, and um, but you know, so so the Jen Moore thing came around, and I had been 
I had been a fan of this kind of LARPing. We're going to get to the LARPing. Just relax, everybody, all right? We're going to talk about it because we got to get the background to, to who, who we are trying to explain this thing so that we can blow the lid off of it because it's very deep and it gets very ugly. But, but the LARP that, that, I was, that, that drew, brought me to, to the Jen Moore case was, was a, 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 a particular LARPer, George Webb, who had this, had this show and two years ago, it was, in my view, it was, there was an innovativeness to what he was doing. You didn't know if he was real or totally full of shit. Right? You, you still, there's still people there, out there that still can't tell fact from fiction. And upon further ev- investigation, it proves to be 100% total, utter bullshit. Right? The whole storytelling is is based on uh f- you know just l- made up stuff or or submissions you know he'll he'll have these people that that follow him and he calls them researchers and you don't know this when you're watching the show and he he then the the researchers are feeding him this information and and then he he projects it as Oh no no! I'm connected to the CIA and the FBI, and it's and it's deep state information coming to me. Meanwhile, it's it's some some lady, some cat lady that gave him a hundred dollars to to tell the story, right? And so so he makes he makes his money fleecing the cat lady, uh, or whoever will give him money. He finds he finds naive suckers, and I'll say it: Jen Moore was appeared to have been one of them who moved to D.C. to be close to the LARP, to be cl- not, but she believed it, right? Because this is a, 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 some kind of a justice warrior. Am I, am I, may, am I sounding vindicative or, or, or does it kind of sound what's going on in this particular LARP with this particular person? Well, I, th- I think it's, it's understandable that there's a slight edge to your voice because you did prove that Jenny Moore did die and mm-hmm. uh, she was covered in bruises and George Webb's behavior was you know un- really unexplainable on that night and you confronted him with it directly and his answers were kind of his typical style of being shady and evasive and yes. changing the topic and moving on and you know he's never been called to account shady. for that and uh, he's yeah. shady right refuses to answer questions like you like i i interviewed him and then he because he's so unsure of the story he has to video me while I'm videoing him. It's it's like extreme paranoia, right? Or you you talk to him, and and then or you communicate with him, and then you see him lying about the story. He's he's twisting the story to make you then counter with another fact or you know try. It's it's a rabbit hole is what I'm trying to say. He's he's and that's what I found. And to prove it even further that. That particular LARP, the guy running that, George Webb, because a lot of the things we're going to talk about, and we're going to get into all these characters, right, all stem from that LARP. I, I think you might agree that it, yep. you, can, you can go a little further and you can say the DNC fraud, the, 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 the hack that occurred between April, May, and June, somewhere in that time, 2016, there was a DNC hack or leak, or whatever it was. What we know for sure is that 12 Russians didn't do anything, right? That was, it was, it was somebody got the stuff and then leaked it. And that was, that was the beginning, in my view, of these, of these LARPs, where then the, the, the accused leaker, Seth Rich, then gets killed. And a lot of the stories now start to connect to, they try to attach themselves to this, primary story of corruption where George Webb will say oh I had a personal uh, interaction with with uh, Andrew McCabe the assistant FBI director and he was targeting me personally and then you say oh he knows somebody right and and then and then the, and the story compounds off of that so that that's all I, the only reason I bring it up is because a lot of the the LARP that we're talking about even with Jen Moore, because Jen Moore is only interesting because Jen Moore alleged that she had communicated and even filmed with the assistance of uh, Thomas Paine, Mr. True Pundit, 
which is not really true at all. Mr. Pundit said that he filmed the accuser of Bill Clinton, the boy that Bill Clinton raped. Right? That's that's that is Thomas Thomas Moore, <laughs> Michael Moore, who's Thomas Paine, and Jen Moore. By coincidence, they have the same last name. You know, so so um, so that so that because without without the 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 allegation that there's a boy, there's a video of a boy confessing to being raped by Bill Clinton, that Thomas Paine, uh, upon being pushed and pulled, it will not produce the video. He says, oh, it's a journalistic uh, uh, integrity. I don't give up my source. The boy, fuck, that's, it's bullshit. He made up the story. He made up the story and sold it to, to uh, uh, fucking George Webb and Jason Goodman. He sold that story based on his credentials, his fake credentials that that um, he said, "Oh, I'm I, I'm 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 involved with the FBI, right? Oh, yeah, I have I have I'm, uh, and it turns out that he was under investigation by the FBI for 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 burning hockey videos. Right? It's just it's just such a scam, right? But it's storytelling, and that's that's the point of the LARP. Like that's where it gets dangerous, right? It gets if I, if I could just interrupt you yeah, for a second, Marcus, just, yeah. just on that particular incident where yeah. you know Jenny Moore, true pundit, interviewed this rape survivor while George Webb was waiting nearby in the car or a coffee shop, and then you know George spoke to them immediately after, and George said he spoke to the survivor as well, but just you know off camera. He said that Jenny's meeting was recorded, so that recording's never been produced by Michael Moore. Uh, but then George had his own version of events as well. If you remember, he said uh, he told a story about a, a yacht party, and Donald Trump flew flew his helicopter into the yacht to rescue the boy and whisk him away. And uh, you know that, that's that's just a, a classic example of how this character George Webb will insert himself onto any story. Could be true, maybe couldn't right. be, and then attach, he'll put his own spin and flavor on it. Attach and, and yourself then it, to the story. Attach yeah, yourself to the story. That's that's right, and and then you can weave the narrative in any direction that you want, and that's really what I think we're talking about today with these LARPs. That it's not live action role play in the sense of Dungeons and Dragons and cosplay and the Renaissance Fair and stuff like that. It's people who are, you know, to, to use my friend Joe Atwell's term, lifetime actors. They're playing a role. They're not showing you who they really are. They're pretending, hey, I'm just a YouTuber. I'm just an average guy streaming my life on YouTube. And then it turns out that, you know, they're working with the Intelligence Advanced Research Projects activity, IAPA, on some of their projects. Uh, they're working with top PR people in the Progressive Party who have John Podesta as think tank as, as their clients. And they are uh, being paid money to spread disinformation and to go and you know attack and smear people's character on the internet. And so this is an evolution in some ways of, of psychological operations. And the latest psychological operations, they use these role players. And it's in a, in a way like the crisis actors that they use for the false flags, except these actors are you know pretending to be truthers. And I think the biggest target uh, for whoever is behind the LARPs, we can talk in a second about who that might be, but the biggest target is the online truth community because what we're doing, digging into these stories, getting the documents, getting the hard evidence, sharing it and breaking it down for people, uh, yeah, I think that's the one thing that the Operation Mockingbird Media really doesn't want the people to be doing because that's the thing that is, is causing problems. And you know, the mainstream media, all the WikiLeaks revelations, all the information that came out, they managed to hijack that narrative away from what was in the emails to, oh, Russians hacked it, Russians didn't hack it. But really, what was in the emails is the key story. And thanks to the <laughs> internet, this vast community of researchers out there, you know, that's been broken down and, and disseminated, and we're all very, very awake now. Yeah, no doubt. I, I, I couldn't agree more with you. I think that um, I just I was just pulling this up. Like, this is my uh, – it's a, it's a three-dimensional <laughs> – uh, thing that I found on the street for a dollar. You got the you got the Hulk in there, you got Spider Man, you got Captain America, right? They're, they're, they're superheroes, right? And in the LARP, right, you can pretend to be the good guy uh or the bad guy. Right? You can be Superman or you can be 
you can be, uh, or you can be Dorothy in the in the in the Wizard of Oz, or you could be the the, the Wicked Witch of the West, or you can be, um, you know, like uh, with Batman, you could be the Joker or the Riddler, right? The evil, the evil LARP. Now, here's, here's, how does how does it stay funded? Right? You touched on it, right? How does it how does it keep floating? Right? Is George a wealthy guy? No, George is a guy who may have some money from his his housing or whatever, whatever the story he tells, right? But but the money is, see, I, here's my, my theory on, on the LARP, right? The guys that are saying, oh, I work with this one and, and I have connections with that one are exactly what you said earlier that they're, well, I don't know if you said it, I'll say it. They're kind of like a patsy effect where they're approached because of their deep dive, because of their talent, right? George Webb is a talented storyteller. He's, he's captivating. I, I don't think, I think his partner, George uh, Jason, is, is the opposite of that. Right? That's why he's just, a mo- Goodman is the money grabber, and Jason uh, and, and, and Webb was the pure talent. But what, what it is predatory. You, I think that's what you said, that the, the money, the deep state, preys on, on that because it's happened to me personally. I could, I could reference hundreds of emails of, crazy ass people pitching every stupid story you can imagine especially around the jenny moore thing i had idiots telling me oh she's only four nine that's not her body i could prove it i got you know i got pictures of of her being four nine i mean just you know and then and then the cia told me this and that and 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 you look at and you say these guys these people are who are these people and then all of a sudden, hundred dollars appears in your in your PayPal account, and you get a little friendly note that says, "Hey, you know, we like what you're doing." You know, I actually had this one fucking lady tell me, "Why don't you get a haircut, and we'll we'll we'll, <laughs> we'll keep or why don't you brush your teeth?" Right? Fucking how insulting! Right? He's telling me, fuck, fuck, I'm like, "Fuck you!" Right? And but what is she? What are they purchasing? They're purchasing the the they're purchasing the 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 narrative to to drive that narrative. And that's probably you. You touched on it in another video with Jason Goodman. That how does how does how do a thousand people f- how do a thousand idiots fall for what Jason Goodman is saying, and and fund him on on Patreon? See, that's highly suspicious. That that people would flock to something so overtly dry. Right? There's some reality to it. I like what he does with Charles Lattell. There's some truth sprinkled in, but the, but the the bulk of it, as we're going to f- talk about, is 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 uh, is total bullshit. You know what I'm saying? And uh, so so let so let's take a dive in. So LARPville. So so just again to clarify what the LARP is, we also s- were saying that it's it is definitely fiction with with tads of of truth, right? But but it's it's designed to steer the story away. Now you could say psychological operation, but you could also say that that you know uh, something like Russia Gate is a psychological operation. Everything is a psychological operation. Everything is a is a uh, is a psyop, right? At, to to some degree because it's 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 um, framing a narrative, right? And then you get a weak player. A weak person presenting themselves as a news media that's you know down on their on their luck and and would take the money in a second, right? And to tell any freaking story, I'll read it. You know, it's like it, it becomes Rachel Maddow at this point will read anything into the teleprompter. She'll read anything. Just read. Just put it up and we'll read it. Pay me eight million dollars a year. I'll read it, right? And 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 that's that's what the. So so what I'm saying is is uh, you know we as we move forward, it is a psyop. It is a psychological operation. It is, I believe, it starts as a game, and then people they find their their level and they say, you know, I like doing this. I, I like making videos. This is fun. I like doing this. And this 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 mystery person right here says they're connected to the CIA, and they're going to give me information, and they're going to pay me. They're going to they're going to fund my account. They're going to they're going to send guests my way. I, I like this. I, I'm gonna do this. What? What? Integrity? What? Fucking truth? Truth? Oh yeah, truth. I, I remember the truth. Yeah, that's when you live, you live poor, and you tell the truth, and you tell everybody the, what's going on in the world. 
but but that see that money that it's that money that 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 steers the thing into a ditch. I'm doing all the talking, so 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 tell me. Yeah, tell well, me about, yeah, go ahead. Let, let, let me maybe break it down a little bit for the the audience. My my view on on LARPs. Uh, yeah, please. That I, I think that uh, may, maybe originally the thing began innocently enough as as just people playing dress up games, but I think at some point in the early two thousands. Uh, the intelligence community looked at this as a technique that could be used to influence people and to steer narratives. And it's a slightly different technique from just having the Rachel Maddow reading the teleprompter where they directly write the narrative and it's conveyed as it is. This is more of a grassroots thing that if they can seed information into the public consciousness, you know, they can subtly steer the narratives either in the direction they want or away from things that they don't want people talking about. And uh, yeah, there's actually quite a lot of evidence that the Pentagon's been doing significant research into this area. And since 2011, 2012, Wired Magazine has been writing about the way they've been infiltrating games like World of Warcraft and other online vid multiplayer video games to study the way people play games to build psychological profiles on everyone. Uh, they have this thing called the sentient world simulation where advanced computers have a version of all of our digital selves. They, they know us better than we know ourselves. They can tell us what we'll be doing exactly two weeks from now with more than 90% accuracy and you know, human guesses are 60 to 70% at, at best. And then this digital self, not only do they track everything about us, but they can then run simulations. So if I you know, send an email to Stephen Marcus with this information, Will they then go on their YouTube channels and talk about it? What will be the thing they highlight? If they then meet a guy in the street the next day that has some you know, extra information about that, you know, can we get them to then talk about that? And so part of it is actually inserting people into our lives uh, to manipulate us uh, psychologically. And so they used to do that on a mass media scale, one to many. We see the Rachel Maddow and that's manipulating everybody. But now it's on a much more subtle scale that through Facebook groups, we're interacting with accounts and through social media like Twitter, we don't know who the other person is on the end of that account, but we might interact with those people multiple times a day, like them, agree with what they say, share their information. So how do you know what's real and what's not? And, and yeah, those accounts could be someone at like an Air Force laboratory sitting with a computer software that lets them control 50 to 100 of these sock puppet accounts at once. And since the smith munt Act was repealed un under Obama, uh, the US can now run psychological operations and propaganda against its own people. And we've seen since 2012 an absolute explosion in both you know, what I call synthetic terror events, the false flags with crisis actors, and also these LARPs, these pe people who appear to be just ordinary citizens we the people, but in fact, as you start digging further and further into their background, you find them, you know, very heavily connected into FBI, CIA, Army intelligence, uh, you know, P PR firms and, and uh, dirt boxing organisations. And uh, yeah, so that, that's, I think, the, the tool for, for everybody that's watching this, what can you do to help you uh, rise above the laps and, and to see what you what information you're being given if it's true or not is just to do your own research don't just believe anything that i tell you or marcus tells you go see yeah. for yourself if, if he says hey here's the autopsy report go have a look at it read it is that you know because that could be a fake document but you start gathering enough actual primary source documentation and the narratives in these things start to become clear they almost write themselves yeah yeah with that autopsy thing i actually had and i i agree with all that i just it's always, it's always, it, what comes first, the LARP or the, the, the information uh, influx? That's what I, I still, I, I still, you know, beg to differ that I think that the money, uh, the, the LARP, the natural talent is there and then the LARP is approached. Because I've never, every situation that in my, my brief experience, my little fame that I have, right, is that the LARP that I'm approached that, that someone approaches me with this idea, right? Like initially, the, my whistleblowing was, I, I had presented that to the public. Goodman picked it up, right? And, and they crowdsourced the truth, ran with it, right? And, uh, but, but, uh, but every situation after that, was, it seemed to have been some friendly guy coming over. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll take care of you. By the way, we got this, you know, this, this story and I, and I can prove all that with the you know through the emails and then 
And then and then you're watching all this and then and then Webb's girlfriend partner dies. And you're like, whoa, right? See, that's where that's what I'm trying to say. And then and then the lawsuits. There's a dead a dead uh, uh, a dead player. There's there's lawsuits. I don't care about their feelings. I don't care about that 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 George's brother Dave Acton says Jason hurt his feelings because he smeared him online. That's all bullshit. You sign up for it. You sign up to be a LARP. You inject your Jason's Jason is not is is not a a, a credible uh you know outstanding character and honest player whatsoever however people that that the 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 larps that surround him and web sign up for it right they they inject themselves like defango like quinn michaels like i mean the the list goes on and on thomas Paine, right uh, Dave Acton, right? Uh, Corsi, that, that's a gray area. Mr. Dr. Corsi, he's kind of, you know, again, it all stems out of that Seth Rich case. That's when these players started to come in. But, but um, I forgot what I was saying. But anyway, the, the, the point is that, that um, the, these, um, <laughs> I don't even know what I'm talking about anymore. So, let, 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 me, let, me, let me just pick up on, on what yeah, you've just up, said. Yeah, pick up, please. Cause, because you, you, you've gone through a list of the cast of characters uh, that, that yeah. are there in the LARP war, but I would say that George Webb's brother, he didn't sign up for it. George, Jason, Corsi, you know, they all came together and actually conspired to do LARPs and discussed $9,000 a month each of payment that Corsi would be paying them, uh, possibly on behalf of InfoWars, although... Yeah, of course, he has said that he has above Mossad intelligence okay, let me, sources. Let me, let me stop you. Let me stop you. So, so, so George Webb and Jason Goodman are, are doing their thing, and they're getting popular, and they have an audience. And then somebody approaches them and says, I'll give you nine grand a month to do what? To keep doing what you're doing, you think. Right? Well, wait, we, that, we, is, we, wait a we, minute. We're not, wait, we're, let me finish. Okay. Is, that, is there anything illegal about that? Is there anything corrupt about being paid to do what to do your passion? Yes or no? In simple terms, no. However, we have to look at this specific case, what happened, you know, within just a couple of weeks. You know, one of them was that they immediately jumped on this Seth Rich and Rod Wheeler uh, case and, then, you know, the Butowski lawsuit, and we can come back to that. But the other thing was that, that this port of Charleston LARP, that they actually shut down the eighth busiest container port in the United States uh, for hours on this, uh, this idea, they called this thing Clear and Pre Pre Clear and Present Danger, which is the title of a Tom Clancy novel. So just, 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 just tell us, Tom tell Clancy us what happened. happened with it. The, just tell it, just describe yeah, and that. So, so and people. so they, they, they made up the story that, uh, that there was a dirty bomb made from uranium inside a shipping container that was protected with diplomatic immunity, and that this was on a ship called the Merced Memphis that was sailing into the port of Charleston. Right. And so the port of Charleston was going to be hit uh, by a dirty bomb, which, first of all, is a story that Lindsey Graham had been pushing on Infowars since about 2011. But secondly, oh. is a scenario in a book by Jerome Corsi that he wrote in 2006. So that's so there's the mind of George Webb. I, I mean, I, I got to tell you, my, my theory on that is that, is that look, they, these are guys, right? I remember the the early days of crowdsource the truth, and I'm not, I'm just I, again I'm not a fan of any of these guys. I think that I can give you case in point twenty five thirty times where George Webb lied directly about me. I have video evidence. He said I have a sister who goes to Stanford University. She's a biology major. He, I work I worked here. I worked there. I, I I was the guitar player for Soundgarden. He made up all these ridiculous fucking stories and 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 did it on video so he has no credibility right he makes shit up 100 percent. so so what i'm saying is this is that you have to roll it back you're in you're in jason's room in in new york city right and and they they and george webb is this this mysterious kind of psychotic you know, alcohol drinking, alcohol George drinking, right? A uh, guy, and 
and he he comes up with this this he, a story that he had been telling all, all for a long time that uranium is smuggled in on cargo ships right it's so ridiculous i live in the, in the new york harbor right here i know tugboat guys that that said impossible it's impossible to smuggle you know uh nuclear material on a cargo ship under the Verrazano Bridge into the New York Harbor heading to the Empire State Building. It ain't going to happen, right? But that's, that's, that's what he believes, and that's what he projects, right? Now, does he believe it? That you, can, you can argue that. I don't know what, I don't know what he believes. I don't think he, he has any ideology at all. I think he just he reads what people will pay him to, to read, and, and he has a, like a f- kind of fantasy novel kind of brain, a sci-fi guy. You know, like he read comic books as a kid, and the idea stemmed from that that particular thing stems from the 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 convincingness of George Webb to convince Jason Goodman, who was a rank amateur at the time, was was just a, you know kind of a a money grab and kind of yeah, opportunist. Yeah, yeah, this guy's great. We'll make money on him. And and there the story came. So what what I'm saying is this about the here's where this is why I don't I disagree with. All the lawsuits and everybody suing each other because it's 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 wrong, and I and I'll tell you why, because the story is really about a really bad news outlet that doesn't even know they're a news outlet, right? They're they're freedom of the we're in the United States, freedom of the press, freedom of speech, freedom to say whatever you want. Now, has has the mainstream media ever acted on a on a on a bad story on a story that that isn't that they get credible information? And and uh, and agencies act on it. and It turns out to not be true. Has, is, does that happen? It happens all the time, right? So, so so George Webb seeds this story, and they're drinking, and it you know, and it, and the the chat is going crazy, and people are calling in, and all the, and they're the center of the attraction. They're 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 doing something in internet that that hadn't been done at that time. They were attracting this enormous crowd. To say that there was, to backdate it and say that there was all a conspiracy and a plan and Corsi was behind it and, and Seth Rich gave the file to this guy and they were all setting the whole thing up, in my view, is, is ridiculous, right? What happened was Webb is then, you know, the, the frenzy starts and they put it out on, on the thread to say, the Mersk Memphis, George's story. It was George fucking Webb's story in his head that he was feeding these guys about uranium on a boat that, that could come in and that he got some tip, right? And the tip winds up being what? The deep uranium guy, right? Some other guy that was feeding him bullshit information, right? So what I'm saying is this. When you start suing people, Mr. Acton, when you start suing people based on on, on bullshit narratives, right, and trying to cons- conspire or create the story before the event, you're no better than, uh, I don't know, you remember in Star Wars when they ran out of future stories, so they started going forward, and they started creating movies about what happened before? That's all you are. You're just, you're just post-dating the LARP, and you're doing it in a way that is very deceptive because in that case... And there's, there was, there was Acton integ- interjecting himself. There's where we disagree. Where Dave's brother was actively making videos. He, he makes, even in, even in welcoming him on this show to talk about this subject, he made three videos because he can't confront me directly. He refuses to do it. Oh, I got a lawsuit. Oh, I got this. Oh, no, no. He doesn't even say it. But that's the allegation. Because he's full of shit. Right? He's suing Goodman, who, again, Goodman is not a nice person. He's, he's vindicative. He's evil. He's come at me with 10 different screen names, attacking me, calling me everything, uh, you know, except the child of God. But he's within, he, I, I, fe- I feel that that's part of the LARP. I inject myself into the story as a whistleblower. Stave Acton interjected himself into the story as Dave, as George Webb's brother, bashing George Webb for video after video after video, bashing him and then deleting the videos, right? Over and over again, he did that, right? 
And he's injecting himself in the story, telling the audience that George is a troubled child, that George has psychological problems. That you know, so so to then say when 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 Jason puts Dave Acton's face on a coffee mug and 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 fucking Dave Acton tries to sue him for three million dollars, I you know, it's just that's where it gets ridiculous. That's where okay. it gets can, it gets can I respond to that? Go ahead, please do. So uh, I, I fundamentally disagree with most of what you've just said in your characterization of the situation. And the way I see it is George Webb's brother uh, didn't inject himself into it. He actually got doxxed. And it's an indication. He's not the wow. only one in the story Tell me how with these characters. But, so he, he's worked in his whole career for you know, the Air Force, government, uh, and the intelligence community. He, he built the directory system for the NSA. He's an extremely accomplished guy, but working in roles that need security clearances and stuff like that, where he's not making a big deal about who he is. And by George coming into the story and saying, oh, my brother was involved in, you know, the, the Nicaragua and Contra Sandinista trafficking or whatever. I mean, Jason never even went to verify that. The dates don't add up of when, when George's brother was in South America compared to when all that stuff went down. But Jason ran with that story anyway and has basically told a bunch of stuff about him and, and then went to the trouble of calling all of the EMT pe people in Mount Shasta where he lives saying that, oh, you know, this guy is being investigated by the FBI. I mean, it, how does good call evidence these, of these that? FBI is, investigations? Is there yeah, any there's, evidence, there's, there's is there evidence, evidence that he called that? Is there any evidence of the, of, of, um, of, Jason, actual evidence of Jason actually doing that, where he's he's trying to harm Dave Atkins' well, we, employment. We, there's definitely there's definitely evidence there's definitely evidence of Jason doing that to Defango and to Titus Frost, but all their employers. As, as Titus as Frost, Frost, stop uh, right you, there. You'd, you'd to, stop right there. Yeah. Titus Frost and Defango are not suing Jason. Dave Acton is suing Jason for defamation of character for three million dollars. So again. Is there any evidence that you know of that that Jason called called uh, Dave Acton's work and tried to smear him to his employees? Is there any actual evidence, recorded I, evidence, I or I, test? It's it's not appropriate for me to talk okay. about what evidence there, there is or there isn't in an okay. active lawsuit gotcha. right now. I've been named in the lawsuit by Jason Goodman. So has Titus Frost, and he's saying that we're in a conspiracy with George Webb's brother. Uh, you know, to somehow take him down. And I'm in the same situation as you, Marcus, that both George and Jason have told outrageous lies about me, Defango as well. I mean, these guys spout off all day long, but so far I'm not suing any of them. But in the case, in the case of Dave's, you know, he was doxxed, he was outed, and he got very upset. You know, remember Nathan from Lift the Veil was convinced that George and Dave were the same person, and so that was kind of part of it. And then he went and, and he got... You know, letters sent from Fort Meade, Maryland, to uh, Nathan's family. You know, addressed to his dead mother. Uh, you know, there was a whole bunch of gang stalking that Nathan was going through, involving the All Seeing You and others. And a lot of these people have come forward and confessed now that yes, they were gang stalking Nathan back in this day. And, and, and so there's this doxing and gang stalking that's going on. And the other character in this LARP war that many are holding out to be the mastermind of all LARPs on the internet. Thomas Schoenberger from Cicada 3301, he also was doxxed, you know. A year ago, nobody knew who that guy was at all. He was a private person, also with connections to the Defence Department and intelligence community. Uh, you know, and it's now come out that Cicada 3301 was started by Bruce uh, Clark Jr., who, you know, he was the head of the CIA's Research and Development Division. <laughs> so this is where this Cicada was always suspected to come me, out of the intelligence community. Let me, let now we know that it has... And, and, and yeah. here's, here's these two guys that didn't want to be in the public spotlight, and now they are. And then people, are the LARPers, are weaving these people into their own narratives. So what, what can they really do other than make videos, tell their side of the story, and go to court and get the evidence on the record in court? And I think that's the stage that we're in now of these three years of LARP wars we've been watching is actually evidence is starting to be produced. Discovery is being done. Subpoenas are going out. And as the evidence is produced, what we're finding is a lot of the things we suspected are true, that these, these people were not just independent YouTubers working on their own. They were being paid money. They were working in groups. 
Uh, they were working for known disinformation operatives, and they, they were being given narratives to send out there. Hmm. I don't know. <laughs> I, I need to. I would need to see. I, I agree with the, the stories that they weave and, and all that, but I, I cannot um, I cannot say that uh, at this point that any of it was premeditated. That that it kind of unfolds in a in a sporadic, uh, unorganized, chaotic way. I mean that that's that's where we disagree, and I and I, I appreciate you you know challenging me on it. I'm not trying to convince you, you know, because I again I can, see can, this. Can I go on? Continue, yeah. I, I just I'd like to share a, another difference in perspective and go back to sort of how how we opened this off. Talking, you know, imagine that it's May 2016. Okay. Right? You've got the elections coming up, and you've I was got there. John, yeah, John John Podesta. He's left his BlackBerry in a taxi. Uh, his password is password, not that hard to crack, right? Uh, and they realise through whatever means that you know someone has got some of the emails from the DNC or Podesta or both, and they're like, "Oh fuck, what are we going to do?" And you know, remember in the Podesta emails, one of the things that came out said, uh, "I'm definitely for uh, making an example of of the leaker, uh, just you know, just to send a lesson, even if it's not the right person." And in another email, Podesta basically strongly implies that Eric Braverman is the leaker. So what what do they then do? Like the, these, so Podesta, Clinton, who, who, who said Ro- Eric Ro- Robbie Book. Who pointed Eric Braverman was the leaker? I'm sorry, I missed it. I didn't hear John, what you John said. Podesta. That's oh, from Podesta's, John Podesta. That's Podesta in, it's in it? the Podesta emails. Ah, so they, so they, ca- they came out from WikiLeaks in October. Uh, Roger Corsi, Jerome St- – Roger Stone, Jerome Corsi are talking in a WikiLeaks, Randy Gretico, that's all on one side of the operation. But on the Democratic side, you know, Podesta, Clinton, Mook, they're like, how the fuck do we get a handle on the story? How are we going to muddy the waters around these leaks that we know are coming out? And so we know that they went to uh, Fusion GPS and CrowdStrike, right? And we know that George Webb, Works with Dmitry Oparovich, the founder of CrowdStrike. They both work for John McAfee. So that's that's an amazing coincidence, right yeah, there from but the very. I, I also uh, went to school with. And, and also, I also went to school with uh, with twenty five, you know, famous football players because I went to Syracuse. That's that's by association. But, oh, he but, went to my school. The, the oh no, no, about, no, we work together at McAfee. McAfee has how many employees? Twenty thousand employees. Do you believe yeah, but, George but, Webb? Do we now we believe George Webb, the liar, the storyteller? Uh, that he the, see how he the, inje- the see how how cunningly he injects himself into the story right there. George Webb worked for Mc- McAfee and and some other guy that had that new Podesta. You, you know, you, you, that's all I'm trying to say is that that and also Corsi and 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 Roger Stone are are impotent in the story of the leak. First of all, because all of the action happened already. The, the 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 action happened May June April May June 2016. By the time Corsi got involved, which was was after the DNC convention in July, right when Trump when Hillary Clinton took, you know, stepped up to the plate as the candidate. That's when they started to smear um, smear Trump as a Russian agent that he was organizing the hack. And that's where Corsi and, and Stone integra- in, in, inject into the story. But the story was already there. Seth Rich was a Bernie Sanders supporter. If, ever, if Eric Braverman was involved, they saw the corruption. See, that's what I'm saying, right? The, the story that, that, that this, this particular LARP tells starts to, starts to take off after the fact. Because, as we know, Julian Assange already had the emails. He had this stuff between April, May, and June. He had. Well, he, he had he it in May 2015, mm-hmm. according to Kim.com, who was also brought into this by George and Jason. I don't believe Jason he told Kim Bloomberg in May 2015 him. that Julian Assange him. was going to be Hillary's biggest Tim, I don't believe Kim.com. I don't believe yeah. anything. He so says. look, you don't have to believe any of these people, yeah. Marcus. But okay. and, and you, you know your point about guilt by association association yeah. is is valid if there's only one association okay. if there are a hundred associations between 
between 20 people. Yeah, but how many degrees of separation? They're all, they're all, they're, how many degrees of separation between them, right? I, I actually know the guy that wrote that book, Six Degrees of Separation, John Guare. He lives in the village. He's, he's actually an old man. I don't know if he's still alive. But, but the degrees of separation, you can always say, the, the LARP always says that I was here and that person was here as well. Therefore, the separation that that, that and then they weave a story around that close proximity without any evidence. That's not evidence that holds up in court, is what I'm trying to tell you. When Dave Acton gets to the end of, end of his trail trying to sue Goodman, it's just the judge, judges look at that and say, it's ridiculous, it's a piss fight, and work it out. And that's why they park things like that. Yeah, you have a right to do it. Anybody has a right to put, pull $200, $500 out of their pocket and sue somebody, right? And with the expectation, oh, I'm going to cross my fingers because... Jason Goodman has a, you know, a condo in, in Chelsea and he's going to make, you know, $3 million. You know, I, I just, I just don't agree with that. But the, the degrees of separation are. Well, in, in the, okay. Let's, let's take the Port of Charleston okay. incident that as, as it's come out now that, you know, Jason was, he was texting back and forth with Corsi during the whole episode. George met Robert David Steele the day before the, the episode Confusion. and the information came from Deep Uranium, who's Oki Marshall Richards Jr., an FBI paid informant. Now, the FBI is known to use agent provocateurs that go and create uh, uh, incidents and events to happen uh, so that they can then set people up as patsies to entrap them. So the FBI is known to give false information to people in order to entrap them, and a known FBI informant gave false information to George and Jason Goodman, and the port got shut down and nobody's got into trouble with it. Now, if you say that these people are just, it's just innocent... It's just such a reach. If, if they're just innocent US, US citizens, then, oh, well, who cares? It's no big deal. It's, you know, just Democrats versus Republicans. But if they are actually receiving money and instructions from foreign organizations yeah. to shut down critical infrastructure, that's a very different matter. And, you know, how, how will... Unless you get, like, but did, a okay, paycheck... Let me stop you there. Did Jason say... Or did George Webb instruct the the uh, the port of Charleston to shut down their port, or was that a decision made by the port of Charleston themselves, based on what could have been credible, believable information? Who made the choice? Who made the decision to shut down the port of Charleston? The port of Charleston. Well, presumably, presumably the port did. But that's yeah. like you know, if you call in a bomb threat and a, and a venue shuts down because of it. It's not the venue's fault for it doing that. It's your on, fault it, for calling it, in the bomb not, threat. It's nobody's fault if it's based on what is believed to be credible information. Now, yeah, well, correct, me, clear, clearly correct me if I'm wrong. Didn't George, didn't George, Webb, didn't George Webb get interrogated by, by the FBI shortly after for jerking off in a car, drunk, or whatever he was doing? The FBI swooped in the car. And they arrested him, and then ultimately he, he was released with no charges, correct? He, he was arrested for a DUI in Ohio uh, the day of the event, which was Trump's birthday, by the way, and the day of the Steve Scalise the shooting FBI. as well. He was uh, no, he was by arrested by the, by the police. The, the, the claim that he was interrogated by the FBI comes from George. I haven't been able to verify that, oh, although okay, how, how okay. could you? There's a uh, and, and, and then the judge, the judge did dismiss the charges. He was asleep in a vehicle. The keys were in the center console, but within his reach. Uh, he wasn't driving it. He wasn't, but how did he get it there? Right. And then, you know, he failed a field sobriety test. And, and after that, Jenny Moore appeared on the scene to drive him around. We didn't see George driving anywhere after that event. So it seems like he got all the GUI. Maybe he was questioned by the FBI. The story made it to CNN and the New York Times, um, but nobody got in trouble. And so there's nothing to stop this type of event happening again. And when I lived in San Francisco, I remember the Occupy protests uh, mm. going on and, and they were able to shut down, you know, ra rail stations. They were able to shut down freeway exits and they even tried to shut down the Port of Oakland uh, a couple of times. Uh, so this, this has been an agenda of groups that use the internet to organize gangs together to operate in concert. You know, shutting down cr critical infrastructure has been one of their agendas and the way this was done by asking for the live audience that was watching and i was in the audience watching this when it happened i couldn't believe this was happening they're asking the audience to tweet this out you know and tweet out the hashtags and this I, is I remember their present danger dirty bomb right? i watched it i saw it i remember it 
Yeah, so so I think I think that there is an element if you read George Webb's brother's two books that he's written about it, there is an element of just we need to protect our critical infrastructure from cyber attack because if it isn't Jason and George doing it, it could be the Chinese, it could be the Israelis, it could be the Russians. You know, nobody gives the stuff. And I think that what we're seeing is that not only is Homeland Security, the FBI, everyone like that, not really trying to stop these crimes and prevent them from happening again, but they're actually like, the, you know, involved with the LARPers who are committing them. You know, yeah. is it, and, and I, I don't believe at all that these people just all are acting in concert and i think that this is the great thing about these lawsuits like for example in the the seth rich case you know aaron yeah. rich seth's brother is Let's suing about ed that Butowski. one yeah, that's the other one that's another yeah. one and, and and ed Butowski is you know connected to rod wheeler going on fox news rod wheeler also went on george and jason show and this is all around the same time like jason goodman just appears on youtube teams up with george webb suddenly they're in the middle of the seth rich case they're in the middle of the iran case they're doing this port of charleston lap i mean they're, they're just absolutely everywhere and, and you think about what was the effect of george webb's reporting on the iran brothers he took luke rosiak's really innovative groundbreaking work basically not quite plagiarized it but certainly made it appear that it was his own work and by doing his as you said kind of cutting edge innovative and, and man senator grassley grassley had all that stuff figured out as well the senator, yeah. uh, the Republican senator. Yeah, but this is this is this is Debbie Wasserman Schultz, right? This all connects back to Debbie Wasserman yeah. Schultz, who's friends with Ed Butowski. And I've published on my Twitter at Steve Outram, O U T T R I M. You can see photos of Ed Butowski with his friend Debbie Wasserman Schultz. Uh, you know, we know we have Jason get, getting this uh, laptop of Imran Awan and then causing a scene in the Capitol Police and ending up with that laptop being returned to the owner, without the prosecution having a chance to look at it. I mean, and, and uh, one lawyer, Chris Gowan, said directly to Jason, you screwed this case up. Wait till you realise what you did. So did they just accidentally bumbling along, trying to pretending, LARPing as reporters, did they accidentally screw up this case into the spy ring that everyone talks about it being Pakistani, but come on. Is this really this Pakistanis of the masterminds? Debbie Wasserman Schultz, yeah. you know, living in the district with the largest number of Chabad centres in the world per capita, you know, I think is another country that's connected to all this, to the Butowskis and, and uh, you know, Jason Goodman and George Webb have both been pretty open about their allegiance to this other small country that I think plays a much bigger role in domestic affairs and international affairs than it should. Hmm. So, so in the story, also we've we've touched we touched on a, a little bit of Defango. I had him on the show the other day, and he again. I don't follow this stuff closely, so a lot of what he was saying while I was talking to him, it, it just kind of went right over my head. I had to rewatch it, and he made some allegations. First, he said that he has communications with Seth Rich. He said that I have I have powerful friends. I have Seth Rich's emails. Um, what else did he say? He said a couple other things. Yeah, well, I, I, I remember that. It was a really interesting interview. And yeah. Yeah, the, the, the story from that like, cha he put cha a lot changes out a lot. Yeah, he throws a lot out, See, sees what sticks. I mean, he made a, a stream responding to the subpoena and producing all of the emails uh, from that he had from the Rich family and anyone con connected. I didn't see any emails from Seth Rich. So, you know, I, either he was lying about that or he did, in fact, have them, but he went and deleted all of those before he made his stream saying, knowing, hey, look at me, I'm going nature, through my email. Knowing the nature of Defango and, and the way he broadcasts his, his thoughts, do you think that Defango would hold on to authentic emails from Seth Rich for three years without telling anybody about it? Do you think that Defango... Would do that. Yeah, I, 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 I find that a little a little hard to believe. But let's go it's even impossible. further than that, Marcus. You know what 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 makes you think that Seth Rich is really dead? Because in the case of Seth Rich, Jenny Moore, and also Isaac Cappy, all well, these I three know, deaths I were believe... connected to Larpies to Larpers and seem a little Larpy. Well, Jenny Moore, we we know that she is dead. I mean, yeah. I well, had... was, was she murdered or was it you know? Natural I, I don't know. I mean, the, the doctor that I, I have, a, I have a couple of couple of people that follow the channel, and one particular doctor, Doctor John, did a great job of investigating the the autopsy. This is a person that actually did autopsies, and I gave it, I gave it to her, and she she assessed it, and said it does. She showed the bruises. She showed the 
the beatens, the but there was also track marks. There was also a lot of other things going on with his body. So was it was it kind of a domestic abuse? We still don't know, right? We don't know. But but the fact that George Webb pulled out of that story so quickly and never ventured to get the autopsy himself, never ventured to follow up on the story of his friend that was killed is highly suspicious. The entrance of his very possessive girlfriends, these women that flock to him, who then stalk you for investigating it and talking about it and bringing it to light, it's all very suspicious still with Jen Moore. Whether My, my conclusion in that was that she was in bad shape. She may have gotten smacked around a couple of times. And she, she, you know, accidental overdose with the, with the, you know, the, the, the level of narcotics, the heat, the bad condition. You know, I had a cat, right? I had a cat that was, was very ill. And even a, I, I had, I brought her to the vet and I said, you know, can you, I know the cat's dying. Could you just give her a little bit of a narcotic? And he said, no way, because I can give her just a slight amount and a heart could stop. And and that's that's kind of that's my assessment with with Jen Moore. Is there was there sig- real evidence of Webb killing her? No, he they were drinking buddies, and he drank as they drank each other to death. It, it originally, I I mean, I almost gave George Webb a nervous breakdown over this because I was very close to to showing that he was you know involved in this right, and he was like he was he was running scared, you know, and. Um, but that's that's Jen Moore. I don't I don't, I don't really Well let, let me let me just pick up on something yeah, about ahead, the Jen Moore story, right? Uh, that you know when she died, it was sort of this interlocking cast of characters coming in to talk about it. There was the Michael Moore true pundit in his role. Right. There was Robin Brick coming on and she went straight onto One American News Network. And yeah, you know, she she's telling the story there about it and she's claiming to be her friend. Uh, even though she didn't have her phone number and only knew her as Task Force, so she didn't even know her name. She didn't know her last name, and that's a, that's a friend. I mean, that's kind of a a weird friendship. But then you also had. But Matt isn't Chow. that the nature of the LARP? Someone, because uh, Robin Gritz, we uh, uh, I'll I'll leave his name out of it. But we we looked into that, and Robin Gritz. It turns it turns out that she was contacting me and other people to get her to project her story. Right, she. I have the email. She was contacting me. Other, all people around that time were trying to, trying to get in on, you know, trying to sway the story in their own way. And Robin Gritz was one of them. But is she just a? Is she just another troll? Another, another person integrate inj- injecting herself into the storyline so that, for whatever reason, you know, people like to be talked about. People like the attention. People like the money that could come out of that with a PayPal, you know, pay, a Patreon account or a, a GoFundMe, she made 30 grand, you know, and, you know, I, I don't Look, know. If, if you go to my, my GovLab video, I, I looked into her story in quite some detail, and there's a lot of things that are really quite mysterious and, and unusual, including that uh, she's one of the few people that heard about 9-11 was going to happen before it happened. Uh, she over She took a report of, of people that her discussion in a cemetery in Hebrew uh, that America, you know, w- will know what's happening when the towers fall in September. Uh, and that was that was reported to two FBI agents, of which she was one of them, and there's evidence for that. So, you know, she's been in, in and also she was involved in the investigation of, of the Pentagon and supposedly the 757 that hit the Pentagon that is on no video cameras with no wreckage visible on the lawn or no charring marks on the lawn from the engines or anything like that. She's telling us that that's so, true. So, so, they, so I think a lot of these people, you can see where they... So so they killed Jen Moore. For what reason? Because she has a story well, about let, Bill let me, let, let, me, let me just go back to Jen Moore. I, I, I'm, I'm not sure that they killed her, but there's a couple of things of note that, that are, I think, important for everyone to consider. One is that she never showed her face, that she had professed to everybody that she was on hiding. And right before her death, there was a press conference about the Seth Rich trial. It was organised by Jack Merk- Berkman, who's connected to the Jacob Wall character. He's connected to Defango. And these, these guys, you know, they, they, they're coming up with these Mueller rape allegations with this woman who's going to tell everything about when Mueller raped her. And when the time comes time for their press conference, 
the lady doesn't even show up. I mean, the same thing was tried on the other side against Trump. Oh, yeah, Trump and Epstein raped me. And then there's no name presented. It's Jane Doe. And when your big Gloria Allred press conference comes, she doesn't even show up to do it. So these are these kind of like psychological operation smear campaigns we've seen before. But at one of these press conferences, Matt Couch was there and promoting it heavily. And Jason Goodman was there as well. And Jason Goodman showed Jenny Moore's face on stream. That was the first time any of us ever saw her face. She was dead less than 30 days after that. Uh, so maybe that's just a huge coincidence. But here's mm -hmm. another coincidence for you. In the news coverage of Jenny Moore's death, they circulated a photo of Jenny Moore, supposedly, and it was actually Matt Couch's wife. Now, why the hell are they ejecting someone's yeah, wife was into this lab? That, I, was I the, that was the OAN network, fake news that right. said that there's, there's Muslim police in Brooklyn. I mean, they're, yeah, they're, and, and OAN is Jack Posobiec, that's a naval intelligence guy. You know, Defango said he was in the room when he first proposed the, the Q idea. So this guy's another LARPer. I mean, this is like networks of LARPers featuring each other's LARPers on to promote these LARPs. And when you dig behind them, they're government people, they're FBI people, they're Navy intelligence people, they're Army PSYOP specialists, you know what I mean? Like, I, look, I, I talk to people from the intelligence community on my channel, sure, but it's not like every single guest I have is, is from what, there. You know? What is, like, let, me, let me ask you this. Let, let's, let's back up. Let's back up. Let's go back to the beginning of this conversation. What, what, is, what is so interesting about this stuff? Why is it... I mean, I, I see your point that it, it ties into greater conspiracies and, and psychological operations that can control a narrative, which are very valuable. But what is it, what is it that makes it so interesting to people to, to follow? Right? You, know, you, know it's, you know it's kind of fiction. Right? You don't believe it's fiction. I believe it's, you believe it's half fiction. I believe it's 100% fiction. I believe that the whole thing is bullshit, and then it's and then and it's it's co-opted and steered because I believe that 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 people like Jason Goodman and 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 Webb at that time, the time of that that Merck thing and the who spoofed the Seth Rich file, were willful idiots. They just had no idea what they were getting themselves into, and everybody in fame, everybody wants a piece of it. I've been on stage. I, I know that feeling. Where everybody, suddenly you're, you're, you're known, and everybody wants a piece, with, a piece of you. And if you don't know what to do with that, if it's never happened to you before, you, you spin out of control. You, you don't know who your friends are, who your enemies are. You don't know who's, who's truthful, then you then you want to do this more, and you become uh, attracted to the money. But that's for the LARPer themselves. But what is so interesting about watching watching uh, a show like 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 what I was doing with with Jenny Moore, disclosing all your view counts go through the roof when you're doing something like that. You're exposing a real murder. You know, or the or the the QAnon guy, right? I've been I've been following that story too. The kid that whacked the the crime boss here in New York, the Gambino crime boss. Right? He killed the guy. He shot him, and he shows up in court with a Q drawing on his hand. Watch the videos, right? Right? That's like fascinating, right? And it is fascinating. That's that's my point, right? So, is that is that what it is? Is like why does he? Why do these things catch on? If nobody paid attention to them, they wouldn't catch on, right? And well, then, what, what, while, you, while you're asking me that question, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm looking at your face and then the sign on the wall behind you says truth, Marcus Conti reporting. And, right. you know, truth is actually extremely interesting right. to me, you know, and, and maybe, maybe we're weird to be interested in, but I think there's a lot of people out there who are turning to alternative media to get truth and are appreciating people that will do the research and you know, track these leads down, get people to answer questions in their own words, produce primary source documents and get expert opinions and, and sharing that. And so as someone who's very interested in truth, I find these LARPers fascinating because mm. what they do is they distort the truth. And it is a mixture of fact and fiction in most cases. Like some of George's reporting has been good. You know, some of the the, the stuff like uh, Kalimnik and stuff like that. He was talking about that very early on. But, you know, so was Tracy Beans. Uh, but then, you know, you, you, you get stuff like, oh, well, they didn't find any uranium in the Port of Charleston. That's because the container ship Maersk 
went out at sea, parked next to the mass Anna in the middle of the night, and they had saved individual sea containers from these massive ships with 6,000 containers each on them with cranes or something in and nobody the sees open it. ocean. I mean, it's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. And, you know, you went and talked to a tugboat captain who confirmed that the other night what could happen. But, but people people do lap it up and they send the super chaps and, and, and they fund it. And coming back to the point that you just made about for the LARPA, why do they continue? Well, if, if it was just... Yeah, you know, they got caught up in the excitement of it, a momentary chance of fame or whatever. You'd think then that two years after their crazed internet behaviour led to a port being shut down and a whole bunch of shift workers not getting paid, that they might think, oh, you know what, I would see the error of my ways. And they might try to change their behaviour. But both George and Jason are doing exactly the same thing as they were before. And, you know, in the case of, of Jason, we've seen, I think, quite repeated actions such as calling people's place of employment, you know, trying to discredit them. You know, he's, he's any, anyone that questions them on their channel gets gets blocked or their comments get deleted, and it's not. Yeah, it's not they, they censor the shit out of their channels. Yeah, George Webb, he drove, but he That's drove by my. Um, George Webb drove by my my house one day, right, right, like right when he was in the in the midst of the LARP when I was giving him a nervous breakdown. And his girlfriend, they drove over the Verrazano Bridge, right? And, you know, you can, in Brooklyn, you can get right in the building, right? You can, you can come right in. It's, you know, you, getting out might just be a problem, you know? So, I mean, these, these guys are, are, there is an element of, of bully with them as well because, because why? You know, because, because they're, 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 they're hooked on the story. They're hooked on following how many comments they got oh look this one's talking about me oh look at this email oh look i got five dollars i got ten dollars and they're 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 actually i believe victimized as well like like webb doesn't know his way out right and he has he has talent i think his his brother is an opportunist i i told you that i think defango is is a kind of a you know he's not as talented, but he has a way of injecting himself and and postmarking his actions. <laughs> like he, you know, he was friends with Seth Rich. You know, I just I don't believe it. You know, I don't believe anything that they're saying. I I believe that Corsi believed that you know Corsi was late. I told you they were late to the action, right? Seth Rich, Bernie Sanders supporter, Eric Braverman, very possible. These guys were 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 in that story. So, so also, oh, that's what, that's what I wanted to say about Defangle. That Defangle says he invented Q. <laughs> now, Q, do you think of Q as a LARP? You think, is it, you think of it, it's a LARP. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I was one of the first people to identify Q as a PSYOP, and it's a pro-Trump PSYOP, and, you know, I support Trump, so I support Q. And the good thing about this PSYOP is it tells people to do their own research. It says, hey, here are these breadcrumbs. Uh, why don't you take these, these breadcrumbs and, and see what you can make of it? Now, interestingly, I've just discovered a video of George Webb using that exact language uh, to describe his own activities nine months before Q was launched in January 2017. George is saying what he does is he gets these like little breadcrumbs from his sources in the intelligence community and they're like, you know, little clues for him to start digging and then he goes and builds a story and a narrative around those breadcrumbs, you know, f featuring the geospatial location of him going to various places and, and filming himself there. So, you know, that, that's sort of in a way the early precursor for Q I think that there was political groups trying to work out how Trump could address this problem of fake news and to maintain the communications. And, you know, he, he went into the election on a wave of lock her up, that we want justice. And people yeah. have seen the most outrageous crimes being committed by people who appear to be above the law. All the evidence we have so far is that they're above the law. And mm. Trump said he's going to sort that out. But, you know, when he came in and started doing it, that process at a very involved long legal process and a very strategic game of dealing with the Mueller report and everything like that, you know, they had to drag that out as long as they could. And so the enter Q, that's really what Q was able to do, was to hold Trump's base together while this legal process was being created. And, we, you know, we do, we had a lot of stuff that John Huber was doing in, in Utah that's been downplayed. We've got this Horowitz IG report coming out, still, still headed towards us. And now we've got this guy, uh, Durham, that we don't really know what he's been up to, but supposedly there's a bunch of prosecutions about to come out. Now, if that happens, 
then Jew was right all along, and thank goodness we have it. But if we get into the next election, and it's still like, hey, vote for me because you know I'm going to drain the swamp and I'm going to I'm going to go after Hillary and lock her up. You know, they're starting to get outside the statute of limitations on a lot of these things as well. So yeah, I think I think that we're going to see a, an increase in LARP activity uh, over the next twelve months as we head to the, the next election cycle. Uh, it's going to be LARPing like nothing before. And the big news of 2016 was WikiLeaks. Uh, I suspect that there are going to be some huge bombshell leaks to come. I think the Project Veritas stuff is part of it as well. But we're, we're going to see this time a much more coordinated approach from you know the, the progressives uh, based around the use of disinformation tactics and LARPing, uh, as well as all the traditional Alinsky tactics that you know, they still use today. Yeah, they want to shut it down. You know, it's it is um, it definitely is volatile. So yeah, so I, I agree with that. I think that Q is was a uh, it was fascinating. I couldn't follow it after a while because what, what you start to realize with Q is that here's the thing. Here's the thing. After to 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 put your feet in the ground, the 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 um, the real angst started in the Bernie Sanders movement where. There was this surge of love and, and, and this coming together and this camaraderie in, in the United States. And 40 million people, 50 million people, like, a, like bees buzzing, came together with, with, a, with the objective of, you know, an extension of Occupy Wall Street. Get rid of, get rid of uh, uh, the, break the banks up. Break up uh, Big Pharma. Stop the military industrial complex. It was genuine. It was real. And, and that movement, I know Bernie Sanders has since been smeared and, and left, right, and center, but that's part of the plan, right? To, you know, you got to smear the messenger. But he's still there. But that, to, to have had that stolen in the ways that you described, in some of the most straight-up, underhanded criminal activity by people that are above the law, causes you to go into a psyop and causes you maybe just to believe that everything someone like George Webb is, is saying is true because everything that everybody else is telling me is a freaking lie, right? I, I believed in, 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 a, in democracy and I believed in free and fair elections and they stole, stole that from me and said, oh, no, no, that was the Russians, right? As if to you know, as if to smack all of us in the face. And that's where it, that's where it really, the essence of, I asked you what brings people to LARP. And, I'm, and now I'm telling you what it is. And that, it's that feeling of betrayal, of, you know, like everything, everything is a lie. Like everything has, all of these politicians that we elected are, fucking lying to us and 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 i'm gonna dive into the truth and that's what brought me into this right that's what that's all the reason i do it and it's it's a battle to stay in the truth because there's easier ways to go you know you can take that money and start lying lying out the back door but but that that and then but if you i think if you stay in the truth you're 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 immune to the attack because just the truths that we revealed in this video is going to piss off a lot of people. And, you know, and, and I say to you, well, that is the truth, right? And you can, you can I'm within my rights standing in New York City to speak my truth, you know, based on what I'm, what I'm seeing. I don't believe what you're saying. So you, you need to prove it to me that it's true, right? Because I don't believe your bullshit. I don't believe your law. Because I've been lied to before, but that doesn't mean I'm going to run to the next savior like Trump. Trump's the savior. He's the, he's, everything that he does, despite the, the, the economic numbers of, of economic disaster, at the brink of disaster, is viewed as, because he's saying it, the economy has never been so good. In my view, Trump qualifies as a LARP, you know, but, but that feeling, of, that feeling of, of desperation, I think, is what is is the way I sum it up is to say that that the the people are attracted to a LARP because because they just want to believe they want to believe that Trump's going to lock her up enter Q they they want to believe that that um 
you know, that, that uh, Seth Rich, you know, spoofed the f- that, that he was the, the leak despite maybe being murdered, right? They want to believe that story so badly. Uh, so that, that's all I'm saying. I think that that's, there's, it, it plays on the emotion. It's, it's a valid art form in my view. I just draw the line when people are murdered <laughs> and, and, and people start throwing lawsuits at each other just to justify their actions. I, I just, I, just I, say, I think, I think before you get to the, the lawsuits, uh, you know, when it, be, when it turns to slander, to defamation, trying to mess up somebody's career, either by spreading lies about them, you know, in a public forum or by directly contacting their employers and business associates and spreading lies about them in, in whisper campaigns, that stuff can be very, very destructive. And the internet is forever. It's hard to get some of that stuff away. So there do need to be some legal remedies and, and recourses. And, you know, I, I, I think that we differ on how we see what George Webb's brother is doing. I see him as really uh, the hero of this piece uh, because he, even though he has worked for deep state organizations in the past, he's also a legitimate whistleblower. You know, he, he sued the CIA uh, over a case of, of reporting uh, misspending of funds, and, and he won that case and you know, went on to continue to have a career in the intelligence yeah, community. But, listen, but, now, Steve, but now, now because he's I was been able, tied up... I, I got to cut you yeah. off, man. I was able to get George Webb and Jason Goodman off my back very easily, right? I made 10 videos, and Jason... I mean, I, I go, I shop, he doesn't even know that, but I, I'm, I'm next to his door twice a week. I shop at the, you know, the Whole Foods right downstairs from his house, right? And, and, and Webb is, these people, the, what I'm trying to say is that the truth can't really, you, if you stay grounded in the truth, you're immune to idiots like George Webb and, and Jason Goodman. They, they can't, they can't affect you. I mean, I, I speculated based on reliable evidence that that George Webb fucked Jason in his ass on his couch, right? And I say that I say that right on the right to his face. I said it to his face, right? You know, and it's it's like, is it true? So if it's not true, how does that hurt you? You do live in the gayest neighborhood in in Manhattan, right? You live in Buff fucking Central in in Chelsea, right? Is it? And and you have a you have a, a mysterious man sleeping on your couch for four weeks, is it? Yeah, and he, he and he has a spoof obsession. Right. So so if that isn't true, you look in the camera and say, "How fucking ridiculous is that?" I'm you know I this is who I am, and 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 it's just not true. And what would be the shame in being homosexual anyway? It's not a shame. It's just funny that that George may have fucked Jason's ass. Right. You know that's. That's humor, and there's, there's truth in humor. Now, is that, is that, do I become part of the LARP? Can't they, they accuse me of being the LARP. Oh, he's, he's just an insert. He's inserting himself in the story. No, I'm just curious. Who killed, the, who killed Jen Moore, and did Jason fuck, uh, uh, did George fuck Jason's ass? <laughs> anyway, I digress. <laughs> yeah. Well, look, I, you know, I, I don't see these guys operating independently, and I, I think, Going back to your point that you were just making about what is the effect of all of these yeah. psychological operations and, and LARPs, it, it does have a demoralizing effect on people mm. and it makes it hard for them to know who to trust. And in that state of confusion and fear, they become easier to lead. And that's actually the plot of 1984, which was published yeah, in course. 1948. And, but, and Animal know, Farm, the, the, Animal Farm as yeah, well. I mean, I mean the, the, the goalposts keep shifting. And you don't know who to believe, so the only one left to believe is Big Brother. And if you don't believe Big Brother, you get punished. So it makes it an, an easy choice. It's the, the carrot and the stick. Right. But, you know, we can find that coming out of World War II, the Tavistock Institute had this plan to rule the entire planet through psychiatry. And they would have these 4,000 psychiatric shock troops that these psychiatrists would basically dictate society by, you know, saying to the leaders of, of each industry and government agency, uh, what was the correct thinking and what was insane thinking. And if you deviate too far from the system, you have insane thinking and you can be locked up and you can be medicated and you can be disappeared. And, and that strategy has played out since World War II. I mean, and that's what's behind the Mockingbird media and, and you know, the manipulation of the fake news. That's what I think is behind these government-connected LARPers as well. It's not just to deceive us for the sake of it. 
It's to put the mass population into a state where they're easier to control, uh, where if, if someone is closing in on the truth that they, the, they don't want to come out, they throw a bunch of LARPers on it to spend all kinds of stories like a one's bringing in oranges and Adidas, the nuclear and stuff like that. You don't know what to believe anymore. Or, or at the same time, if, if, if you want to promote a particular narrative that's false, you just get a dozen people all saying that same narrative at once and referencing each other's channels. And uh, I, I, don't know, I don't know if there's any solution in sight for this other than for people to, you know, be discerning, learn how to do your own research and, and think for yourself, get as much information as you can. And if, if someone is talking a lot of shit about other people and not presenting any evidence and saying that that's the truth, you know, the, I'd be suspect of that person. The people who are saying, look, here's the evidence, draw your own conclusions, I'm more inclined to believe them. Yeah. You know, Steve, it's great talking to you, man. I don't, I don't, uh, I don't really, I'm not an interviewer. I'm just, I, I just enjoyed the conversation. It was a great conversation. We agree on a lot of things. We don't agree on, on some stuff, but it's, it's good to, I, I see you as, um, and, and, and Nathan, Nathan too, Nathan uh, at Lift the Veil gets a lot of shit. I see him as an honest broker for the most part. I see him as someone... We didn't really talk about him, but Nathan is, uh, I find him to be, I don't know what credible means, but I think he looks at something and he's, he speaks from the heart. And I see you the same way. I don't see you as, you believe what you believe, not because you're trying to convince me or twist my arm. You believe it because you believe it. And that's, and that's fair. That's fair game. Right? We don't have to agree, but we don't have to, um, because you don't agree with me, we don't have to smear each other. And, and, oh, now we're enemies. And you, you become, you know, you start out as, as Superman and now you're, you know, you're, you're a villain on Kryptonic or something. You know, you, like, that's, that's the whole, that's, um, so, so anyway, so, that, I mean, what else, man? So you're on, what else, plug your stuff, man. What, what about the tarot card? Yeah, so you, you, you can find uh, my blog, burners.me. Uh, I'm a crypto beast on YouTube. And Steve Outram, S T E V E O U T T R I M, on Twitter. Uh, the tarot cards behind me is an artist called Susie Trister. Uh, it's called Hexen 2.0. And she spent four years studying the intersection between the computing and the tech world and the counterculture. And that's also the same area of my own research. And so I was really fascinated to find an artist that had looked into that. And she chose uh, to paint 78 tarot cards as a way of illustrating this very complex story because the underlying theme of, of her work is that you can't just look at technology as about the electronics and the engineering component. There's a social component, but there's also an occult component. Mm -hmm. And many of the people that came up with these technologies were into occult concepts such as the golem. Uh, and also, you know, s some of the technologies themselves are uh, actually have embedded, you know, occult concepts in them, such as there are uh, demons that are running on the internet all the time and, and terminology like that. So if you look into my work on YouTube, I did a series called Silicon Valley Secret Weapon, The Shadow History of Burners. Uh, it's seven parts and it's uh, almost like a university level course into, into this type of stuff, the history of the tech industry. So if you want to see any more of my work, uh, yeah, ch check me out there or, or I'm very active on Twitter. Sounds good. So we're at we're at an hour and a half. So um, so thank you all for tuning in. If you want to leave you leave your comments, this is an open discussion. If we if we want to talk to Steve again, I know how to find them. I, I think we, we have a we have a chemistry here where we can uh, talk about these things openly. I know people. Some of what we said is not going to be uh, uh, received well, but 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 know it. It's with that we're trying to find. We're trying to get to the truth. If I insult your truth or your your ways, you know it's not a it's not personal, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Although it may seem seem impersonal, but once you know, so so that's it. Let's uh, let's kill it here. Marcus Conte reporting. Stay with me, Steve. Marcus Conte reporting. <laughs>